get my shared screen back up here. Sorry, this is, we're going to get there. There's just, just one of these for some reason is. This working a second ago, so I know I can do it again. I think this might be it. Yeah, okay, we're back in business. Thank you all so much for your patience. Um, thank you all for coming today. Uh, my name is Michelle Donahoe. I'm the executive director here at the DeKalb County History Center uh, with Audrey uh, King from the Elwood House. We have these programs on the first Thursday of the month, and it's been a while since we've been here. We've been on the road quite a bit, so it's nice to be back here. Um, and uh, we've, we're in the home stretch. We only have uh, two more programs left for the season. Uh, next month is um, about our, we have two people from NIU uh, talk about the Black Oral History Project that we're doing, um, Drew Vandercreek and Stanley Arnold. And um, so that I believe is back here at the History Center. And then our December program is gonna be 100% virtual. And um, that is because we have a speaker from the Illinois Road Scholar Program. Um, so she, I, do you remember the topic, Audrey? So pictures cards, a happy invention. And um, I, I have seen this program before uh, several years ago. I know she's updated, but she does a really good job. And postcards are one of the funner parts of our, our collection here. So uh, don't miss that one. Uh, and then uh, I will talk a little bit about some events that we have coming up here at the History Center. Then Audrey will share what they've got going on at the Outlet House. And then we'll go ahead and jump into today's program. But um, October is super busy. Oh my goodness. Um, I feel like we're all just running around um, a little bit more than usual. And I think after these past two years, we're a little rusty up with that. Um, but this coming Sunday, we have two fun events going on. We've got a walking tour going on on uh, State Street. Uh, so uh, West State Street, yes. Yes. Yeah, and so those walking tours are the ones that you don't go into the houses. Today, we're gonna to talk about the ones that you do go into them. So sometimes we get questions about that. And then at 1.30, we're going to be doing our cemetery walk. Uh, so that will be over at Elmwood Cemetery. Uh, then we have our training for the housewalk volunteers. And you're going to hear um, a little bit more about that. But that's on October 22nd at 10 a.m. 22nd. It's a Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> then we have our big housewalk. Uh, so uh, and for those of you really into local history, on Saturday, Leland has their cemetery walk and October 23rd Hinkley um, is also doing a cemetery walk. So there's a lot of good history going on around DeKalb County. So now I'm going to turn it over to Audrey to tell you what's going on at the Elwood House. All right, so over at the Elwood House, it's October and you probably don't want to hear it, but we are gearing up for Christmas. Um, <laughs> Uh, as you probably know, every holiday season, we bring in community members and organizations and local businesses, and we fully decorate the Elwood Mansion for the holidays. Um, we, I think the house is mostly booked for decorators, but if you are part of a group that would like to decorate, um, please let me know and I can pass your contact information along and we can get a room for you to um, deck out. Uh, it's one of the most fun parts of the year for us. Um, if you would like to volunteer for the holiday event, we can always use extra hands. Um, and that's a really um, fun and pretty easy volunteer opportunity to learn. Um, so again, you can get in touch with me um, and we can set up a training to learn a little bit more about the mansion history so you can share it with people as they come see the house for the holidays. 
Um, as you might know, we're in a little bit of a transition at the Elwood House Museum. Our director, Brian Reese, has just ac accepted a new position in Rockford. Um, so as we go through that, there will be some new, exciting, a little bit sad changes. Um, but yeah, we hope to see you at the Elwood House. The regular tours of the mansion will go through October, excuse me, November 16th. Um, then we switch over fully to holiday tours. So thank you. All right, but the main reason that you're all here are to learn about the uh, Pumpkin Fest Historic Homes Tour, and it is in person this year, hip hip hooray, um, after two years of having this event go virtual, um, we are back in person. Uh, so I'm going to have uh, Jane and Teresa kind of walk through the different homes, give you uh, some more details, and then I will kind of fill in with um, some uh, not changes, I'll say improvements maybe, um, of how we're um, going to take some of our experience from the last two years and making this a virtual program and doing things that we've been wanting to do um, with the housewalk that we haven't been able to do and um, have those options available online for people too. So um, it's not going to be the, the full um, virtual experience that we had before, but there's a few little things that um, we're going to offer this year that are a little different that we've done in the past too. So um, I am going to turn it over to Jay. Um, I do, I'm going to pass around a clipboard just for people to sign in. Um, that way we can add you to our mailing list and let you know about all the different things that we've got going on in the future if you're interested. So Jane, all yours. Hi, everybody. I'm Jane Higgins. I've been chairing this event for the History Museum since 2012. Uh, we have done eight in-person ones and then the two virtual ones, which I hope we don't have to do again. Last year, we did 15 houses on the uh, virtual tour, and it was a lot of work, but it was fabulous. So I don't know if there's still opportunity to view that, but you can ask Michelle about how to get that. <laughs> no, anyway, it was, it was fabulous, but we are really excited to be back in person. But given that we're still in this climate of a bit of uncertainty and many of actual homeowners weren't really willing to let us, the whole public go through their homes right now. I mean, we understand this. We chose a, a theme that is just a little different. Let's see if I can figure out what I'm supposed to push here. Okay. So our theme this year is working from homes. So all of our properties, we have five properties, and all of them are were originally homes, really nice, fancy homes mostly, and have all been turned into businesses and are currently businesses. We thought businesses would be, first of all, a little more open to the public coming in, which proved to be the case, and very excited, in fact, to have the public come in, and had protocols in place. So, you know, we will um, have, you know, some protocols available certainly the hand sanitizer and masks available and things like that, you know, uh, to mitigate things. But um, it will be an in-person tour. You, We will have tour guides. We will go through the homes and you're going to get the brochure that has all the historic information and stuff, as we've always done, and a bit of a tour guide as well in there. So if you miss something, you can kind of go back. Uh, tickets this year are going to be $20. We'll get to that at the end. So just a flat $20 for anybody. Um, you know, uh, so that will be a little easier to deal with. Um, and, and in the past, we've done 25 for individuals and, and uh, 40 for couples or two together. So this is, it's, you know, giving you a little break, hoping you'll come back and, and enjoy our program again. Um, um, anyway, so we're very excited to be here. And these are all fabulous homes. So these are our five locations. We have 212 South Main, and they're all on Main Street, basically, Main and Exchange for the one, but uh, 20, two, 212 South Main um, it was the original Universalist Church. More about that in a minute. 204 is a big yellow house on the corner that's now uh, it houses several businesses. 107 West Exchange, which is Rick Turner's uh, law office, um, which thank you, Rick, thank you, thank you. He has signed up yesterday. So we hustled to get this all in our presentation today. 
Um, 351 North Main Street is the current location of the Resource Bank. You've noted as many other things that we'll, we'll talk about. Um, it is the carriage house for the Townsend Mansion. So we will be doing that. Um, and then we have 1730 North Main, which is a familiar address because it's right here. So you get to come to the museum, you get to go through the exhibit as if you have a ticket for the house walk, this is your chance to go through the exhibit, even if you're a volunteer and got a free ticket, you still get to come and go through our exhibit. But we're also opening up the smaller house on the property, which was the older house that uh, was original to the farm here at the Eng Farm or Stark Farm, as we now know too. So uh, we will that will be available and part of the tour. So a lot of good good stuff here. All right, let's start with 212 South Main. Oh, and this is Teresa Jacobson. She's our researcher, been on the committee since the very beginning. And I could not do this without her. She's really good at the research. She finds stuff I can't even imagine finding. But in the joiner room, I've got to give some credit to here too. You know, especially Rob and Kathy in the joiner room have helped us tremendously because we also are, have done two. God's sake, get on with the program. Lots of extra research and, and things have go, gone into this. So especially yesterday when they jumped in and got me all the stuff I needed for today for a new property. So anyway, we know this place. This is on, on South Main. Um, this was in tough shape in the past. Um, we, you, some of you might remember it being like that. Um, it's two doors down from Elm Street on the east side, if you're trying to, you know. But it was the original Universalist church in town. Uh, it was the uh, heard in uh, 1855 and the building built soon, soon after. It was just one story when it was originally built. Some of the uh, later people remodeled it into two stories, added all the Italianate details. It was not Italianate. However, there are still details in this house, as you'll see, that um, that harken back to the church and and really the the windows that originally, uh, you know, the shape of them and stuff is, were the church windows, and they mimicked that on the second floor when they did that. Many members of that church were really involved in the Underground Railroad. Now, around here, you know, it's a bit of a joke because everybody in town thinks their house was on the Underground Railroad. Well, they probably didn't house slaves, certainly not at this location because they didn't need to. There was a location a couple doors down where they did. And, um, but many of the people of this church and the deacons were very involved in the Underground Railroad, Deacon David, West and several others were very involved. So, um, you know, likely they went to church there. As there's some, we've seen some articles about some of the slaves attending church services at this church, in fact. So um, it was important to the Underground Railroad anyway, sort of a hotbed. This is the charter from the original church. So, um, and it is uh, framed and on the wall at, at the location today. So when you go there for the tour, you get a chance to read through it and, you know, check out the signatures and stuff. Pretty interesting. Let me go back to the um, uh, list here. It was a church until 1875, and it was sold to Arthur Stark for his residence. And then they erected the new church, was erected on West State Street. You uh, probably knew it as the community center, if you go back here a ways, or the Midwest Museum of National, Natural History. Okay, that's the building that they erected after they uh, left the small one-story building here. Um, and so, and uh, Arthur Stark was of the Stark family on DeKalb Avenue, not the Marshall Stark family that was here. There's a couple of Stark families in town, but he was of the ones from DeKalb Avenue that had the mill and all kinds of things in town. And, and uh, so he's of that, that uh, branch of, of that family. It was the long time home of Earl Wetzel. You know, some of you might go back long enough to know about that. Um, it was renovated. That's one of the families in there made the second story and added things on and stuff. 
but then it was just a few years ago, uh, totally renovated by Nancy Seymour Heatley of the Seymour family, Seymour Paints. Um, and she was quite an interesting person, but she she got a great deal of money into this. It's really fabulous because the newest renovation, they left her touches with the fabulous kitchen. There is a doggy shower room. You'll love it. <laughs> and it looks like a doggy shower. You'll know it's a doggy shower. <laughs> oh, it's really fabulous. And she, but she only, after she did all the renovations, only lasted a few months. She had her downstairs bedroom all set up and everything. But she passed away soon after she finished all this reno renovation. One of the things she did that still exists all astroturf in the backyard because she didn't want to mow the lawn and didn't want to have to pay somebody to do it. You know? Yeah, didn't want to tear it up. Yeah. Right by that entrance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of some interesting touches that she added. Um, Riley uh, Unkin, the, the lawyer, owns it now, has done his own renovation into uh, offices and created offices out of the space that was there, especially upstairs. He's done some changes, but did not do horribly significant changes to what, what Nancy had done. And they have all kept the integrity of the original church building, the front door, the locks, the you know, their chandeliers, a lot of that, you know, are, are go go back a long way. The windows and doors probably to the church, um, some of the chandeliers and other built-in touches, probably to that very first renovation when it became a, a two-story building. Um, so these are some of the wonderful, Teresa takes my pictures and loves light fixtures, but these were fun. These were fun light fixtures, the wall sconce, the doorknobs a little more familiar to some of you probably had those in homes you grew up in and, and the door hinges. We find this in some of the historic homes. The first time I saw one of those, I went, why would you make the hinge? Well, they left the door open a lot. So then they wanted that to be pretty too. So pretty hinges and beautiful new work. Yeah, the, the, the uh, um, light fixture there with the, circular medallion there but if you look really close up at the top there's a spoon sticking in there it was quite a story uh when the law office was trying to take a picture of their uh of the people that worked there this chandelier hung down too low so they tied they tried to tie it up and the only thing they could find in the place that would hold it up there was a spoon so they put it in there, but they liked the height of it so well that they just left it there. So it's still there. There's a spoon in the light fixture. So <laughs> we like that story. Some more touches. Uh, again, stained glass windows, leaded glass windows, uh, uh, and the inlaid floors, probably, again, original to the big renovation, the first renovation. Okay, wouldn't have been found in the church. Uh, maybe the one in the middle, but we can't really for sure date that, though that could have been. Uh, but I don't think the original church really had stained glass windows. The universalists were sort of minimal as far as that went, and, and it was a pretty simple building back there. Hi, baby. So none of this stuff is probably original to the church, but, you know, installed along the way through the various renovations. Still has radiator heat. We find that in many of these old homes as well. Those are yeah, and the inlaid fl floors are, are gorgeous. So there's gonna be different styles of wood and inlaid floors throughout the house that you can see. We love the backyard. Again, that's a picture of the AstroTurf. And then there's a mosaic thing that Nancy uh, Seymour put in as well. That is- There, he, uh, Ryan, uh, he, he put in <laughs> Yeah. So there's a Yeah. Who knew? You know, but yeah, so they're probably going to have to replace it and start mowing the lawn again. But you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, go potty, they like baby. to do it. So, uh, 
Uh, yes, she added a lot to that lower floor. That was, yes, oh, oh 04, I think. I'm not sure of the date, but come on. Yeah, oh, 04. She... There were some others that lived there after Wetzel's, I'm sure. I, I've been about yeah, a number of people. I know, I didn't open the door. Did um, we're working on it. They'll probably it's not a very lofty key. When we do the these key. Uh, house walks at Don't the you? property, we always have a book of all of the research we found and all the timeline of everything that's available for people to look through at the location. Okay, so it's way too much to list in a program like this, but there will be that list at the property the day of the walk. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll figure it out. If you've got something to give us, let 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 uh, Teresa know. It. We'll look it up. So we'll add it to what our story. We are certainly open. That brings up a good. That brings up a good question. If you go to any of these properties and you've got memories to share, please do. Because you know we're, we're always adding to our knowledge of of all these wonderful houses and and who lived there and and you know all of that kind of thing. So that's that's always helpful to us. We do this book as a gift to the homeowners. So you know because the homeowners they don't get a lot out of this. It's you know they the pride in their home is not why they do it or their businesses as far as this goes this year, but. You know, so we do this whole history forum, which they're usually very excited about, and they get to read that. And uh, we do a nice bouquet of flowers and a pumpkin for them, and they get free tickets to the walk. Seems like not too much for all that trouble, but they love it. We have such supportive homeowners in Sycamore. So good out here, doesn't it, huh? Very proud of, yeah, they all are. And the, the next one too, the, the businesses that are there just, and really, really trying to keep the integrity of the old buildings. I think in all of these structures that just runs through all of them that we're really trying to keep the integrity of the old buildings. So the next one is 204 Main Street. Um, it's on the corner of Main and Elm there. Um, it is, a uh, huge house. It would have been huge as a single family dwelling. And the single, single family that lived there filled it. It was built uh, in the 1860s. It was a long time residence of, of uh, maybe a familiar name, Audrey, uh, Abraham and Sarah Elwood, the parents of Isaac, who you know has her place. But a lot of them, he was kind of the black sheep if you're from Sycamore, because <laughs> You know, he left Sycamore. The others stayed around Sycamore. So, you know, Reuben Elwood, Chauncey Elwood, Abram Elwood, they're all mayors. And James was the postmaster, I think mayor at one time too. Alonzo, did you have a question? I was just wondering when they I'm not sure I understand what you're asking. You're talking about the one we Yeah. Would they have filled up? Is they uh, like uh, I, I'm sure they shared lots of bedrooms back then and stuff. You know, I mean, I grew up sharing a bedroom with two sisters. So, yeah. Yeah. They wouldn't have had. Yeah, but they would have done lots of entertaining. They were very major players in, in, in Sycamore, some of the first settlers, some, you know. So they definitely, you know. But there were there were a lot of bedrooms in this. Right. Yeah. I don't think this house has really changed much since it was built. It's pretty much on the same floor plan as it always was. So, you know, probably, but there are quite a few bedrooms. So, 
you know, I'm sure many of the kids and grandkids came and visited and they did lots of entertaining. So this is the... <laughs> big guys. And Abraham and Sarah, they're at the top. So and many of the others as well. Okay, look, what else was on my slide? Okay. Oh, for a lot of years, uh, Abraham had a cooper shop at the rear. So some of the, uh, some of the garage area back in the back and stuff was a cooper shop at one time. And I think it's Yeah, it is. Um, and since then, it's been through lots of, you know, renovations and things, because it's been a lot of different families and a lot of different businesses. I mean, it's been around for a long time. So it has served many other uses. It's been a business for a very long time, various businesses in and out. I know Wendy, Wendy Tritt used to be in that building with her design company. And so a lot of different people and different kinds of businesses have been there. So these are some of the lovely touches though. Probably original entryway is really nice. There's this whole curved uh, up to the stairway. There's a bay window on the side that's that that looks out that's very nice or that's on the front. That's on the front. Uh, yeah, original windows. There are still original windows and some in this house and you can tell because the glass is all wavy and you know all that. Um, and on the back porch, if you go out to the back porch where they did build on a little bit, uh, they closed in the porch and stuff. That's the original siding. So we can we all got excited. The the lady that has her business there now that was showing it to us went, I can't believe first Carol and then you guys got all excited when I showed you this old this old porch that we don't even use. <laughs> like original siding, it's one of our favorite things. So. But the curve of that front entry is very nice and there are built-in cabinets. And again, been a lot of people there. We can't really date when some of these touches were put in. I think the entryway looks quite original. We're guessing that, and again, the Elwoods had plenty of money and entertained a lot. So some of that may be fairly original. We do know the windows are, so, you know, we'll just go with that. But <laughs> we, uh, our next one is 107 West Exchange Street. So this is Rick Turner's law office. Most of you will know it. He's been there since probably 1984 uh, in that building. We have found some very quite interesting stories about the building. Um, it was built in 1855 for Judge Daniel uh, B. James. You know about downtown and have ever been on our downtown tours, you know there's a George's block uh, where Blue Moon Bikes is and it's been several things there. That big, the big brick one coming Sphinx in the back there across from the courthouse there on the corner. Um, uh, that building was known as George's block, but originally was James's block. And that would be this James, um, not first names in either case. The last names were James and George. So <laughs> um, in 1957, uh, the. Uh, I don't think it's kind of a little bit of a company. Yeah, they were going to buy it, make it into a gas station, tear down the house, make a gas station there. City Council didn't like this idea at all. The, the articles are pretty funny. So, um, and we just recently found out that before this house was built, uh, it had been, they had moved a saloon building onto the property and it got struck by lightning and burned down. <laughs> Somebody's saying that this didn't need to be a saloon or a gas station. They wanted it to be a law office. <laughs> Oh, fireworks, yes. <laughs> so, you know, that one burned down and the gas station didn't make it. So it has, though, been a law practice since 1964, various different attorneys. Uh, have been in that building, but Turner Law Group, Rick Turner himself, and then 
now Turner Law Group, he's added partners, um, have been there since 1984. So, you know, and if you have been around for a while, well, you've seen they just the last few years, they did a, a major um, addition on, on the back. It did a fabulous job of matching it to the front of part of the house. It's fabulous. Expanded into that lot, tore a house down, and there's now good parking space, which we needed in the back there. So, okay. Um, these are some pictures. That, I love that picture. That's the original house. It had a tower on it, a wraparound porch. We're more used to seeing it like uh, that, and the you'll see the porch is no longer wraparound, but the integrity of the house is still there, except the tower is gone. There's chimney there, but no, no tower anymore. Um, and um, that, that was, that's James. Yeah. That's, that's Stevie James. Yeah. Okay. Next property. This is the resource bank building. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, the towns and mansion right next door. Let's see. Uh, which is Paper Doll House now. Of course, we, we'd love to do Paper Doll House, but they have a lot of guests in on Pumpkin Fest weekend and they do programs and things. So so we're, we're not able to uh, have people go in there, but we talked to Resource Bank and they were happy to. We will have to move outside at one o'clock because they closed the lobby. And because it's a bank, they can't really let people be in there when the bank is closed. So, but we will stay there at that property with all the history and pictures from the inside. And, um, you know, I'll be there myself. So I'll talk to you about the history of the Townsends. And I've done some things for Michelle on the Townsends in the past, some really interesting things. We want that World's Fair stuff, Michelle. <laughs> so there's a lot of, uh, Fred Townsend who built the mansion in Carriage House is quite an interesting character and had a lot to do in Sycamore. Let me go back. Um, they were a wedding gift from uh, from his father-in-law, Charles Boynton. That's another name you might be familiar with. So, um, and that's a pretty nice wedding gift. You know, give me a house like that. Wow. You know, and then the carriage house was built to match the house. And it was never, everybody says, oh, carriage house. It was horse and buggy. Never was. It was always built for automobiles, including the first car in Sycamore lived, lived in that carriage house. So it became a, a service station, as most of you, many of you will remember, in the 1930s. But then by the 80s, it became a whole succession of restaurants. And Kathy just found me a really cool picture of it when it was the town square. So we are looking for pictures of the restaurant building when it was different things. I know it was grandma's, it was Main Street Cafe. So if anybody out there has pictures that you'd like to sh share with us of it when it was a restaurant, we'd love to have those, that'd be great. Then in, in 2015, Richard Cass, uh, president of Resource Bank, purchased the building, renovated into the bank, honoring its origins. I, I can't tell you how, what a fabulous job they did, as you know, Resource Bank always does but a big nod to them for preserving this and even bringing back some of the things that were there in the original carriage house, um, as you will see. But uh, you do remember it being the uh, gas station and then the mansion you can see in different eras in the background is quite fabulous too. <laughs> But you'll see already in that picture of the gas station, the, the, one of the big features is that stonework that we know. And there's an, uh, uh, a close up of it. And, and Richard told me a wonderful story about that. So when they were building it, they, they had to match that with the new parts that they put on for the drive through and stuff. Um, and they, it has that wonderful, uh, pink colored roping through all, uh, well, evidently nobody knows how to do that anymore. He couldn't find a builder. Well, they searched all over, found somebody, I think it was back east, I'm not sure, but they found one builder who stu still knew how, to do it, how, knew how to do it. So they had that guy teach our guy, the guy that was doing the renovation, how to do that roping. 
and they replicated it all. If you look, you can't tell which is old building and which is new. They just, it's a seamless job of, of renovating, but keeping the integrity. Also the windows, uh, they uncovered when it was a restaurant that hadn't been opened, the ceiling had been dropped. I haven't been here long enough to know what it looked like as a gas station, but um, but I know when it was a restaurant, there there was a ceiling there and you couldn't see those upper windows. It's all open now. It is fabulous. You'll want to catch this. Um, and and all those, those are original windows. Um, there's the beams are now, you can see the beams and the ceiling uh, from that. And then one of the nice things that Resource has done is they've done a lot of historic pictures that they have mounted on the walls. This is their boardroom, but their reception area and all that have, have historic Sycamore pictures. So that's also a really nice touch that they've added. Like yeah. Gas pump, yeah. yeah. It says resource bank yeah. on it, but they had them, they had them made for them. <laughs> yeah. A nod to the gas station that many it was it was a gas station for 50 years. So that's a that's a nice nod to to the past. And it just, you know, and again, that's kind of a theme through everything you've seen. Everything on this walk is the just the integrity which which these buildings have been treated as far as bringing back or restoring or you know replicating uh, the the spaces into uh, you know the nod to the history of the buildings is fabulous in every one of them just fabulous job of of keeping that integrity uh, while still making it functional for a business so I think that's one of the things we really found when when doing this we thought they'd be boring old buildings that just like like businesses but they don't at all they really have all the touches of the homes and. You know, so I think it's just going to be a fabulous tour. Our last property you're sitting at. Okay, lots and lots of history here. Uh, we're trying to get it all put together in a timeline. Um, this has been a really, really important farm to DeKalb County, and I like to say to the world. Uh, agriculture has changed partly because of the people who were here who were very involved in uh, the Farm Bureau and the DeKalb Ag, and you know, there are, we have huge connections to all of that. Um, the farm was first owned by Marshall Stark, one of the pioneers of, of uh, Sycamore, and certainly uh, you know made it into a large, workable farm. Uh, Harold Ang Sr. purchased the farm in 1927. Some of the articles say with Tom Roberts, but he didn't purchase it with Tom Roberts, but Tom Roberts was here all the time, evidently. They have pictures of them together and he toured the place. That's what, you know, but he did, was not on any of the agreement. You know, if you hear that, that's not correct. Um, it was Harold Ang um, and they lived here. They didn't ever live on this property. They built a wonderful house down Mary Oaks Drive, which is still there. You can go down and see it. Um, and so in the big house, they had they that had that built and, the, and the, well, I had it renovated from a house that was already there. Uh, and um, that was where the farm managers lived. We have a list of the former farm managers that we'll include. And the smaller house was hired hands most of the time. So until eventually it was uh, cut up into apartments. I knew somebody who rented an apartment there. Uh, and there was in one of the one of the she said one of that that very thin little room was a bathroom at one time and you know it's really quite interesting but it was rented out um, whether it was cut up or they rented out she just rented a room with the bathroom so I'm not quite sure how that was all done Michelle probably has more information because she was involved with the whole renovation when we took it over. It, well, more than, yeah, several people lived there at a time, so I don't know how they did that. It's, yeah, 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 so they had to share, 
they had to share some things, but you can still see on the ceiling where it was. So, and we are gonna let you go through that building. Uh, not the larger house we're not able to show at this time. It's just some structural issues and things. So it wouldn't be safe to do that. I'd, you know, so, but you can look around it on the outside and wander our grounds as much as you like. And like I said, you get to come and see this wonderful new space here. Um, those of you out there in virtual land, if you haven't seen it, please come. Uh, that's your chance to get to see our exhibit and our grounds and everything as part of the tour. So it's really worth it on that day to come. Um, so it became the, hist the Sycamore History Museum in 2009. The land had been gifted to the city. There was you know, some back and forth over who was gonna occupy it, but Michelle back there is quite persuasive. I, <laughs> I, I wouldn't say no to her. I, yeah, I haven't said no to her for a lot of years, but no. Um, she's a wonderful force in, in making all of this happen. And then uh, and then in, we started talks, what, about 2017, got serious talks. It had been mentioned sort of before that, I think, but really serious talks in the board meetings and all about making this an entity that could really serve the entire county because there really hadn't been that kind of entity where we could have exhibits and program space and, and everything dedicated to the history of the county. And we had the place and we had the space and we were, and uh, Michelle and a bunch of people really helped with the, a uh, lot of people get a nod to that. There's a wall out there of the donors and the people that helped make this a reality. And the space we have now is just fabulous. Um, so again, you can tour, tour this space, but you can also tour the house. Um, that is Marshall Stark. This is the DeKalb County Soil Improvement Board. And they were, you know, again, just a lot of connections to what was going on in this farm and to the people that ran this farm and stuff too. So. Oops, that's my go back to work form. Not going yet. Okay. Um, so there's some familiar faces there. These are the Eng Corners picture. And that's a picture with Bud Eng as the little boy on the tractor there. You know? So Bud was uh, Harold Eng Jr. Okay. Um, and then, you know, a lot of you would remember the Carlsons were the farm managers and that picture was probably taken with the little, I think it's a little girl sitting on the porch there. I love that picture. And then this picture, Teresa and I were out here one day when the Reince family showed up and they were farm managers in the thirties, forties. And, you know, and that's a picture of the whole Reince and they had a lot of sons. So they were running the farm, doing all the work with horses. And if you can imagine, this was a very big farm too. So I, I, you know, they brought us this photo, which is one of our really favorite photos around here. So, um, you know, I can't tell. I think that's part of the tractor. Oh, maybe they're out. Maybe they're out hunting. I don't know. Maybe they're out hunting party. I don't know. You know, who knows? <laughs> and then we have a, the aerial picture that we like so well around here. Of, of, was the 1970s? I think that's right. 60s, 70. Yeah. Yep. And then a picture of it when we were the uh, Sycamore History Museum. I like this picture because it's before the water tower was built. So... <laughs> We remember the building of the water tower around here. Remember having a brown bag lunch in the garage and they were sandblasting on the tower and it was very loud, you know. <laughs> oh, you know, so anyway, these are some pictures sort of before and after. So when we took over are the smaller two pictures, the big pictures are the current look and we added the ramp and, Lots of wonderful volunteers. I remember just an army of volunteers out here. You know, they were landscaping like the day we opened, you know, the day before. It was, I was, I was pulling a few hairs. But yeah, yep, yeah, same. That's the front view on the top and the back view on the bottom. So you can see what we did to add on the, uh, make it accessible. And we moved the entryway up and did some renovations that needed to be done to meet code and everything. But yep, that's the same house. 
it is a cute little house and roomier than you'd think. Yeah, that's where we met, became good friends. And that's where this whole idea of, you know, because I went to Michelle and said, you know, the library's not doing the house walk anymore. And she went, okay. <laughs> I said, do you think we could do it? She said, how much time do you have? <laughs> Pretty much. I said, if you can do it, let's go for it. And we've always had her full support, of course, but we have a wonderful committee, I got to say. Uh, Steve Bigland and I um, started it, and then we asked Teresa because we really needed a good researcher. Steve's great, but not very good at computers. So, I mean, he knows more than the computer sometimes, but, you know. And the, <laughs> the, the best story is that the first housewalk ever, we started doing our cold calling, knocking on doors to see who wanted to be on the housewalk. And he said, well, let's start with East School. I don't know who owns it these days, but I'd like to see it because Browns don't have it anymore. So we went and knocked on the door. We, he opens the door, it's Joe Bassett. I've known him since he was you know, little because I know his mom. I went, oh, hi, Joe. And, and he said, and who do you have with you? And I said, this is Steve Biglin. And he said, Steve Biglin. <laughs> and we went in and he invited us in right away, said yes, before we even got through the door. And on his coffee table open was Steve's book, one of Steve's books. So we knew that was a pretty good in and a pretty good sign that this was supposed to happen. So we've been at it ever since and we've had so many fabulous properties and I think this year will not disappoint. These are these are really cool places with you can see the home but you can see what they did for to make it to a business which I think is a whole another interesting layer, you know, of things and of course working from homes as far as the farm goes, that's the ultimate working from home. It is your home, so that's why we're included here, and it has been the museum now. So that is our walk. We need a lot of volunteers, especially since we added a big new property yesterday. So uh, to volunteer, you can call here, and they'll take your information. Uh, if you go to our website, um, the, uh, there'll be a link there to volunteer, I think. I know it's going to be on Eventbrite, so if you need details for volunteering, and don't don't you know don't hesitate to pick up a phone if that's easier for you. Also, Joanne Minter, that's the fourth person of our committee, and she's done the volunteer scheduling and everything since we started in 2012, because um, that was my job when the library committee was doing the walk, and I said I'm not doing volunteers. I'll organize the whole thing, but not doing volunteers. And Joanne is one of those people, if you get her on the phone, she's really hard to say no to. She's just so nice. <laughs> it's a hard job and she works very, but we could use all of your help. Any of you, even if you can't stand for long periods, we need ticket takers. You can, we'll, we'll get you a chair. The shifts are about two and a half hours. Um, you, you will have a training the week before the 22nd. And saying that wrong, the 22nd of October, right here at 10 a.m., we'll have information, a printout sheet of, of the property we'll have you scheduled for. Um, if you don't get a hold of us ahead of time, just come that day and we'll still sign you up. We'll still need some volunteers. So that'll be that'll be great. Just just come and volunteer, be part of this. It's it's so much fun. You also get a free ticket, so you get to go to all the other locations. So, but somebody asked, well, if you're doing the third shift, how can I do that? Well, you come and get your ticket at the volunteer training, and, and we'll give you the ticket so you can go to the whole thing in the morning, have your nice lunch downtown at one of the stands, and then come and do your shift. So, you know, we've got this all worked out. There are three different shifts, um, morning shift, uh, 10 to like 12, 30 and then 1215, there's an overlap. All you're gonna have to do, you're not gonna have to be an expert on this house. You're gonna come, you're gonna trade off with one of the volunteers already here. They've got 15 minutes to explain to you what they're doing, but you're gonna be in just one part of one of these houses. You don't have to do a whole tour of the whole house. You stand in an area, you direct traffic, and you point out some of the interesting things in that part of the house, you know? So it's really a pretty simple, good way to earn your $20 ticket. <laughs> and tickets. 
are going to be available out here or at Rustic Roots. That's where I got the 20th from. On beginning October 20th, we'll have tickets out here. There'll be a list of the properties that go with the ticket. So yeah, you know, for a long time, uh, Sweet Earth, Ben Franklin, Sweet Earth, did tickets for us and they were always our biggest sales. So they were asking, where are we going to go this year? So Rustic Roots has agreed to do that. So a big shout out to them as well. Yeah, no, same place. Go to wherever you've gone before, either out here or come to the volunteer training, get a ticket and, and, and volunteer for a shift. So that's a good way to do it. Okay. Thank you for joining us. Um, so we do have a sign-up sheet. If you just want to, you're like, I'm all in. Um, you can sign up over there in the back. Um, no, it, that's a different one. It's it's on the way out. <laughs> um, but we did have a couple of questions here. So, Joanne, yeah. Yeah. Oh, is it or is it North Grove? North Grove School. Oh, Central. Oh. Okay, yeah, we'll have to find out some more about that. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. I don't not, not directly connected. Um, I haven't heard that in with Heralding Senior or their children, but I can certainly check into that and find out for you. Yeah. So the only other thing that I wanted to um, let you all know about that we're doing a little differently this year is previously everything was available online because we were virtual. So this year, the plan is to have a little QR code in the booklet and Jane has all the booklets that were produced here in the past where you can see um, some more information or see the pictures in color. You know, these just pop up right here when you're looking at it and it's so expensive to print in color. And there is usually between three and 400 people that participate in the house walk. So we won't be able to do that in print, but we will be able to do it online. So um, you, anyone that gets the, the brochure will have that code. And then anyone that's a member of the History Center, um, after the house walk, we have a members only page and that information will be on there as well. So um, if you lose the booklet or you can't find it, let us know. Uh, but we just thought like, okay, we have a lot of people that are interested in the story. And into that day of, you're not going to be reading the booklet that much. You're going to be enjoying the houses and reading the booklet later. And then you can go online and see those great pictures. Uh, so thank you all so much for coming today. Please uh, spread the word. Let your friends and family know. Uh, this is just, we know Pumpkin Fest is a really busy time for everyone. Uh, but that free ticket is a really great way to um, you know, enjoy the housewife. So thank you all again. We hope to see you in November.